Since the time I was about 12, I have always had my own vegetable garden. And even throughout my entire childhood, I remember working with my mom in the garden all spring and summer, weeding, planting, harvesting, and then preserving the fresh vegetables that we had grown ourselves out of our garden. So much has changed since then. Now I'm married to a wonderful man. I have a beautiful little daughter. And yet, my love for gardening has continued throughout the years. There are so many benefits to gardening and raising some of your food yourself. Several that I think of right off the top of my head is that you get your kids a hard work ethic by having them work in the garden with you. You know if there's any harmful chemicals or pesticides or sprays on your vegetables, which there are in so many grocery store vegetables these days. You have such a satisfaction knowing that as you're cooking up your dinner, you provided most of the things out of it yourself. But perhaps the biggest benefit to gardening right now especially is just with all the economy changes since this whole COVID situation where we've just seen how quickly the economy can crash. So the idea of being able to grow and raise the things we need every single day to survive and live is really appealing. I love the idea of not having to be so dependent on a grocery store, a supermarket, Costco, or other such places in order to get food. Today we're sharing with you five different vegetables I highly encourage you to grow in your garden starting today that you can put in a root cellar or you can put in your garage and keep throughout the entire winter without tons of canning and tons of preserving. Okay, so there are so many different reasons why I recommend potatoes as the number one crop that you start growing today over all these other vegetables that I'm gonna be talking about. The reason for that is not only can you harvest them and enjoy them throughout late summer and through fall, but they're a really, really easy source of food that you can store over the winter, and if you have any extras, you can easily replant them in the spring as seed again. As far as planting potatoes go, it is so, so easy. And I wanna share a couple tips with you today of planting them that'll just make it even easier. Now, if you Google or watch some YouTube videos or read different blog posts about planting potatoes, they can make it sound so scientific. I find it ridiculous, personally. I've always planted my potatoes in a really simple, easy way that I'm gonna be showing you today that cuts down on the amount of digging you have to do by like 50 or 60%, which is the main reason why before that I didn't actually like planting potatoes just because there was so much digging involved. So typically if you read about planting potatoes they'll suggest you plant them 12 inches apart about a foot deep into the ground. And when you read this it makes it sound like if you plant them wrong you're gonna have no crop or your potatoes aren't gonna grow and I think that's totally wrong at least from the experiences that I've had. So a huge tip that I recommend when it comes to planting potatoes is that rather than having to dig like a foot into the ground and if you have poor soil that might be really a hard process. I just dig my potatoes about three to six inches below the surface of the soil and then I go back and I actually mound up about three to six more inches of dirt on top of what I've already covered them with. So it totals them being covered about a foot under the ground. And that way when it comes time to harvest them, not only am I not having to dig so deep to find the potatoes, but as I'm planting them as well, it's much, much easier and much less labor intensive. So that's how I plant the potatoes. I just mound up the dirt and I don't have to dig nearly as deep. The reason for this is because as your potatoes grow and start to expand in the soil, the dirt will actually start to fall away from them. And so you wanna make sure that you don't have any potatoes that are exposed to the sunlight because if they start to turn green, they're actually turning toxic because of the sunlight. And so I recommend that as the summer progresses and as your plants start to grow, that you do go back and keep raking dirt over them several times to make sure that you have a good yield in the fall that you're actually able to enjoy. Keep in mind, I am not an expert when it comes to gardening, but another thing that I personally do and I've had great success with potatoes and getting really good yields. One year I grew about a thousand pounds of potatoes is that you can actually plant more than one potato in each hole. And so if I have a lot more potatoes than the amount of space I have to grow them if I plant only one in each hole, then I'll actually plant sometimes three or even four potatoes, especially if they're smaller, in one hole. And I'll just plant them a little bit farther apart. And that way I get a tremendous amount of potatoes and it requires less space. The other great thing about potatoes is that you actually don't have to have a tilled soil in order to plant them. You can actually just put them down on cardboard or paper, something to mulch the area to keep down the grass and weeds. And then you can just put straw 
over top of the potatoes. As they start to grow, you will need to continue to cover it with more and more straw because your straw will start to break down in a bit and become thinner. But that way, you can have potatoes in a totally non-tilled area and you can start growing a crop that can help you get through the winter on a smaller budget or get through the winter on healthier food without having to have the expense of a tiller or a huge amount of area to plant your potatoes in. So that's another reason why I really like planting potatoes. The most wonderful thing about potatoes is as far as storing goes, all you do is you lay them out on cardboard, one layer thick for about two weeks, then you collect them, you can put them into cardboard boxes, and you can store them all winter long with absolutely no more preparation, except that you want to keep them out of the sunlight. So those are a few tips I wanted to mention when it comes to planting potatoes that makes it really, really easy and not a lot of work to get back a really, really good amount of food. The next one that I'm planting this year that I will be able to store throughout the entire winter is onions and I actually planted 20 rows of them. I want to have enough for my immediate family, my brother and his wife, any people that I just want to give them away to and I'd also like to grow enough to sell. And so I'm hoping by these onions that I started to be able to have an abundance that I can keep throughout the winter and also give away and sell and make a little bit of money. Onions are a bit more tedious to plant than potatoes in my opinion and they do take a little bit of time but just with some water and sunlight I'm hoping to get a really good yield this year. You can either buy your onions as starts like I did or you can just start them as seeds and then depending on how large you want your onions to get, if you want them to be smaller and you can put them in salads, then you plant them about three inches apart. If you want them to be large, then you plant them about five inches apart, which is why one huge tray of onions can take up 20 rows. Storing onions is also super easy. All you need to do is put them in like a cardboard box. You can put them in your garage, someplace that isn't too warm and doesn't freeze. And then also a place that doesn't have tons of light. And they should be great throughout the entire winter, which is a huge reason why onions were the next thing that I decided to plant. Okay, so the next thing that I mentioned that I really suggest you start planting are carrots. And the reason for that is because they are just extremely good to keep over the winter. You can either keep them in the ground and dig them up the next spring and eat them. If you don't get a lot of snow, then you can continue to dig them up over the winter. Or else you can actually put them in your garage and they'll stay good depending on how you store them. So you can put them in potting soil and actually store them in layers that way and they'll keep over the entire winter. So with these carrots, I do want to maximize my amount of space because I want to grow as many as possible. So I'm doing almost more like market rows. And market rows is more of like a two to three foot section, however long you want it to be. It's about two to three feet wide. And I'm planting four rows within these market rows. And so the reason for that is because I can get a lot more and a lot smaller amount of space. And so I encourage you, if you're doing a garden, to think about something you can eat long term versus just having a couple little things that you go in and nibble throughout the summer. So I'm gonna show you how to plant just two of these rows though because I've already planted eight rows so far. So I'm gonna walk you through the process real quick. Next, I'm just gonna use a hoe and I'm gonna make grooves in the ground, not very deep, but to mark where my seeds go. So when it comes to planting carrots, I like to open the packet dump the entire thing into my hand and then seed from my hand because I can tell a lot better how many are going into the ground at a time so I can judge to make it somewhat even. Some people go along and they just keep the seeds in the packet and they shake it out. I just find that it's harder to do that where it's all consistently planted. So I like to use my hand but do whichever one you prefer. If you look on the back of your carrot packet, you'll see how deep you need to plant them in the soil. You don't plant them all that deep. I like to plant them a tiny bit deeper sometimes than they recommend just to make sure that after I've watered, my seeds don't wash away. But after you've planted them, then you're just gonna go back through with a rake and you're gonna rake the dirt back over the seeds and just do it gentle because you don't want to rake your seeds away. carrots you are going to water them a lot until they start to germinate at least or until you start to see little green shoots coming up through the ground which usually does take a long time carrots typically about the time you feel like your seeds must have not germinated they'll start popping up so it's a good month or two 
All right, there you have how to plant your carrots. As far as watering them goes, it just depends on where you live, but you wanna make sure that the ground stays semi-damp. So here, I don't have to water quite every day yet because it's still raining, but probably in a month or so, I'll be having to water my plants every day. So just make sure that the ground is staying damp because that was a huge problem several years ago when I tried to grow carrots. I just didn't realize how often I needed to water them for how long before that you'd actually tell that the seeds were actually working and growing. Also, I like to use heirloom seeds typically. This is called Heirloom Evermore Seed Company. And actually, it's a family friend that runs this company, and so I really like to support them. But with the heirloom seeds, you can actually allow them to go to seed, and then you can collect the seed in the fall and replant it the next spring. So it's really sustainable, which is neat if you don't want to spend money buying seeds every year, or if things go crazy and people start buying all the seeds, you still have the chance to start a garden the next year. So then I like to just put them on the stake so that I can keep track. So if you don't mark your rows, most likely you'll forget where you planted them. So that's how I keep them in order. That's how I keep track of where I plant them. And so you all, that is how you start your carrots. As far as harvesting goes, you can just check and kind of feel around the base of the carrot, see if it's about the size that you like and pull it up anytime and enjoy your carrot harvest. So another great vegetable that I would really recommend growing is cabbage and the reason for that is because it requires basically no preparation to store long term and you can keep it over the winter and even into the spring at times just by putting it in your garage or in your basement or in your red cellar. Just be sure that you make sure you cut off about six inches below the actual head of cabbage and that way it will store a lot better and then break off the really large leaves. But cabbage is another really great thing that you can store. You can make it into sauerkraut, of course, but you can actually store it just the way it is by putting it in your basement. Now, I haven't had super good success with starting seeds, and so I haven't actually started any cabbage from seeds this year. I did buy all starts, but they're really not that expensive at the moment, and I was able to pick up quite a few of them. I'm going to get more. Right now, I'm planting quite a few Ruby Perfections, and those are really, really good red cabbage head that'll store long-term. So just be sure that the type that you're growing stores long-term, but most cabbages do. And so they're another one I really, really recommend. And another thing too that I wanted to mention is if you're having a lot of problems with bugs eating holes in your cabbage as it's growing, then put some ash below the cabbage heads and it will actually keep the bugs away. And so typically throughout the summer, a couple of times, I will go out with a bucket of ash and put it around the base and that really, really helps. So cabbage is another thing that I really recommend you grow. All right, the last one I wanted to tell you about today is squash because there are so many varieties of squash that will last all winter long. There's acorn, hubbard, meat, spaghetti, so many types of squash that can keep throughout the entire winter. And so the reason why I'm not out in my garden is because I actually have my starts right here. I'm going to be getting some more. This is just a sweet meat squash and a spaghetti squash. But I do not want to plant these until there's absolutely no risk of frost. And so for us here in the area that we're in, that is about another month. And so that is one thing to be really careful about when you're planting your squash is to be sure that there's no risk of frost. Squash is a really, really easy thing to store as well. All you have to do is put it in kind of a dark, cool place and it'll last a really long time. And if you buy some type of heirloom seed, you can always replant them the next year and save the seeds. So these are just a couple of options. I hope you are able to try even just one of them. Maybe every year add another one on and see how it goes. See what grows well in your area. But you all, gardening is just really satisfying. It is a wonderful thing to do. It is so nice being outside, working with your hands, eating things that you've grown, eating things that you know if there's any sprays on them, you know that they're healthy. And so I really recommend, especially right now with everything that's going on, that you put a little bit of time and effort into some type of garden. It's a wonderful experience. And I think you're really gonna enjoy it. So have a fabulous week. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you soon. Bye.